So a lot of people do follow this um, path and it's, uh, it's actually pretty nuts. Hello everyone, this is Ronan Blue, just taking my daily walk here today. And today's topic would be on reasons why you're broke all the time. So I don't know about you, but I have a lot of people around me always saying that they're broke. And I actually had a conversation with a friend of mine and we were curious on that topic. And uh, so we just went um, online to check a website and that showed uh, stats of the national averages. And uh, it showed that um, a good percentage, it was over 70% um, were saying that they had less than $1,000 in their savings account. Now that's a horrific number. Um, and I couldn't really uh, believe it at first. And, and I read further and it mentioned that um, it really didn't matter what uh, income um, level that you had. Um, it actually still showed uh, that they had only a thousand dollars in their bank account and it's very surprising to see that fact um, and there were other stats as well it showed that only about 13 percent um, had over ten thousand dollars in their savings account so that was a bit surprising as well because uh, ten thousand dollars isn't really a lot of money and uh, if you are part of the 13 percent um, you should congratulate yourself because you're among one of the um, higher savers out there. But it actually showed another stat showing that uh, only about 40% of people have a uh, savings account. So the, all the, the rest of the people only have a checkings account. So imagine that, about 60% of the entire population of uh, North America ha having only a checkings account. So if you think of it from that perspective, uh, all the money that um, gets deposited into their checkings accounts probably gets uh, spent right away or it just sits there um, being eaten away from um, inflation. So it's pretty uh, wasteful. So for those who are um, watching this and don't have a savings account, I would uh, si highly suggest that you do get a savings account. Um, you know, you don't want to keep your money in a checkings account. You want to always uh, remove your entire paycheck basically out of your checkings account. Um, after you pay all your expenses from it, uh, any excess you want to take out right away. Um, otherwise, it's, it's like uh, fruit that's uh, rotting and you don't, you don't want it to be there for too long. Um, you want to try to invest that and make some interest. And I guess uh, everyone kind of lives at the moment and spends as much as possible to have that self-gratification right away, that instant gratification. Uh, so they spend away all of their earnings. But of course I understand that uh, the circumstances for everybody is different. Um, some people have those um, six-figure incomes and some people are well below it. So some people have children, some people don't. So there's a number of different factors on the reasons why a person would be broke. But, um, but for each individual there are techniques or ways to save um, within each of those situations as well. So let's look at some of the reasons why that um, people are broke. And uh, what, one of the biggest reasons was because um, a large percentage of people in North America uh, don't have a budget. And looking at the national page, it was over 60%. 60% of those North Americans do not have a budget going. So um, that's one big reason why that um, people are broke because uh, they don't see the benefit of having a, a tracking sheet and um, noting all of their expenses. And uh, there is a simple uh, budgeting technique called the 50-30-20 rule. So basically 50% would be uh, for your household expenses and 30% uh, would be discretionary and 20% would be, should be your savings. So if you follow that rule, and this is for anyone's um, income level, uh, you'll be pretty well off and it's, it'll be adjustable to your cost of living. And another reason why is that you ignore your money habits. Um, so a lot of us uh, are addicted to certain things like uh, drinking for example or um, you know other substances and uh, I was actually uh, addicted once to coffee I was drinking Starbucks almost every second day and those those coffees um, do get pretty expensive after a while so from looking at that um, it's, it's all about discipline and uh, your behavior in controlling um, your spending habits because otherwise if you don't um, control them, 
it just uh, leads to anxiety and depression and um, all sorts of different stress-related um, situations, um, all related to um, your finances. And one of the biggest reasons why people get divorced or break up, break up is because of uh, your financial situation. But if you do have a hard time in um, getting away from those bad money habits, um, there's a lot of um, places where you can seek help as well, where they will sit down with you um, for free actually, and consult you in what kind of steps you can take to get yourself out of that situation. And another reason why you're broke all the time is because you're always going out. So looking at that budgeting rule that I just spoke of, the 50-30-20 uh, rule, it actually becomes 50-60, uh, 50% 60, uh, 50 towards your household spending and 60% on yourself. So a lot of people do follow this um, path and it's, uh, it's actually pretty nuts um, in, in some situations um, in how they spend all of their earnings um, away on just uh, getting that um, instant gratification. But the thing is, you're not the only one. I mean, a lot of people such as ourselves had that issue as well. Um, and it took a lot of discipline to pull ourselves out of it. But uh, the main reason why is because uh, a lot of our society actually, you know, wants us to always constantly spend. Um, we're in a society of consumerism and uh, competition as well. So. It's with our nature to always compete with each other on having the best things, you know, the fastest things or the better things that uh, apparently makes you a better human being uh, just because you have stuff um, better than others. But uh, from my perspective, um, it actually makes your situation even worse because you're buying things that you probably can't afford. Um, you're paying for things that are well above your means and uh, will be detrimental for you for the longer term, especially if you're looking to save towards uh, retirement or possibly early retirement. From that perspective, you wanna really look at your own behavior and think who cares what your neighbor has, you know? Um, who cares about the status that some people have uh, with their stuff? Because chances are, um, they, if you were to look at um, their banking records, it's most likely the case that the majority of them are quite broke and they might even be worse than you are in uh, keeping up that image of, um, of status. And uh, for me, I really don't care too much about status and uh, it was one big reason why um, we were able to you know, achieve financial independence because um, I put aside what I wear, I put aside what I what kind of car that I drive, or um, I put aside um, the place that we live. Just uh, breaking down those bad habits that some of us have, um, just looking at another website that we, we found, um, it actually mentioned that, uh, for example, smokers, they actually spend around $2,000 a year on cigarettes. And uh, people um, who drink alcohol, the average adult, actually spends um, close to $500 per year on alcohol. But another surprising point that we came across was that a lot of people who buy the lottery, um, buy into the lottery or buy lottery tickets, uh, they're spending like $300 a year for these tickets. And some people even spend way more than this. And it's a crazy thought to think that, um, you know, the odds of um, actually winning the lottery is next to never. But looking at all the costs just mentioned, um, like smoking and drinking and lottery tickets, um, coffee probably falls into that category as well, especially if uh, you drink at Starbucks every single day. It does add up. Um, it's actually compound interest working against you year after year after year. So um, some of those habits, um, yeah, like it, it takes a lot of discipline to quit. And uh, I was guilty of it too for my coffee habit there. You might think that uh, quitting coffee would be depriving yourself. Um, but there's all, always ways around having to buy that cup of coffee from uh, Starbucks. You know, you can also, also uh, brew it from home and uh, buy some uh, cheaper quality coffee. So there's ways around it. And uh, smoking could be something a little bit harder. Uh, drinking could be something that's a lot more challenging as well. But uh, there's a number of people who have quit those bad habits and uh, they're better people today, I would say. 
um, than they were before um, in terms of their health. So another reason why you're broke is because you ignore um, the power of interest or compound interest. So you just uh, maybe don't have the time to do a little bit of research, um, moving maybe a little bit of a surplus that you've gained over the years and uh, into chasing some yield um, that's way better than just having a sit in your checkings account being exposed to inflation. So that's another big reason why you're broke all the time because you don't see the overall benefits of uh, having to grow your nest egg at a three to seven percent per year increase, um, especially if you buy assets such as uh, dividends and index funds or ETFs. Um, there's a number of places where you can just have your money sit there and grow your wealth. So it might be the factor of fear. Um, some people are a bit scared of investing. Um, if you look at the media today, there's always a fear in the newspapers about the markets, about a market crash, about the United States and China and all that. But um, the stock market has always survived. And uh, for example, for us, we've been investing for the last 15 year period and we've actually survived three major crashes. And uh, if you read the newspapers today, they say that um, there's not gonna be ever a recovery. And people fall, fall for this, but the people who have uh, the most experience in investing know that um, they should buy when there's uh, fear in the market. So whenever there's fear, that's when you are to invest. But um, yeah, but I can understand that a lot of people would be scared to invest in the stock markets. But the markets have year over year over year shown that um, it has uh, beaten pretty much all the other options out there in growing your wealth. But another reason why you're broke uh, might be because uh, you haven't invested in yourself, like uh, getting uh, some sort of a degree or certificate to better yourself, to raise your skill set for a better job. So. Some people say that um, it's actually best to invest in yourself uh, just to fight to get those, um, that education and to uh, continue that education even after you did reach a certain milestone. Um, for me, I really want to continue learning as much as possible every day. So that's why I love reading. A person with a bachelor's degree on average earns uh, a, mil a million dollars more than a person with a high school diploma. And a person with a master's degree actually earns close to three million more than a person with a high school diploma. So if you look at that perspective, um, education becomes all powerful as well in uh, making those uh, dollar figures throughout your career. Broke all the time is because you're doing useless things. Like a large percent of us, of us just spend our time watching television or playing those video games or uh, just wasting our time overall other than spending um, that time for more effective things like uh, self-improvement. Um, so that's the difference between the average person and uh, the people who are wealthy. Because the people are, who are wealthy are always focusing on self-improvement and volunteering and uh, doing things that will overall better themselves. Um, some of them even have part-time jobs, um, even when they don't even need um, that money. But um, it's a, just a way for them to uh, grow themselves as individuals and uh, focus less on what the media has to say than the newspapers or um, the television, the commercials that you see that you're exposed to on a daily basis. Um, in a lot of ways that kind of stuff really influences you and if you actually pull away from all of that and spend your time on more useful things um, then you'll find that um, you'll you'll be exposed to a lot more ideas out there that could potentially make you a lot more money or uh, a better um, living. Another reason why you're poor is because um, you're house poor and car poor. And this basically means that you spent way too much on uh, the place of your, your dwelling, as well as the uh, transportation that you've, you bought as well. I mean, the house would be the number one thing that's the most expensive in your life. And number two would probably be a car. So some of us actually spend way above our means to get that you know, picture perfect home or that um, really nice sports car for uh, whatever reason. Um, 
I mean, it could be because you, you like it, but um, there's a difference between a want and a need. And uh, especially for those sports cars out there, I mean, a lot of the guys out there, um, I'm guilty of it when I was younger, bought those uh, sports cars. I mean, I, I bought a mid-sized engine uh, sports car there that was well above my means and I really couldn't afford it. And this is one of the reasons why I do talk the way I do today because uh, I'm trying to teach others that um, it's really not worth having to um, show it off, you know? And um, you start to think, or I'm starting to think that it doesn't really matter what other people think of your lifestyle and the things that you have because that doesn't define who you are. And um, in most cases, people don't really care of the stuff that you have. They really care about uh, who you are as an individual so and what they what you mean to them as a person not for the stuff that you have but really it only takes around uh, 30 minutes I would say to just put everything down on a track trackable sheet of all your expenses and you, you'll identify um, all of the bad money habits that you have um, uniquely to you and how you can find compromises to it like for example, um, for me drinking coffee at Starbucks, I changed it up to um, just drinking the coffee from home and uh, eventually quitting coffee. So you want to look at those alternatives as well for yourself so you, so you don't feel deprived as well. You might also want to look at um, some of those side hustles out there that, um, that's unique to maybe a skill set that you can use. Um, or you can maybe even get a part-time job as well and get away from uh, watching the television or playing those video games and um, trading that time for uh, gaining more wealth. So there's a number of resources you can take a look at and you might be su surprised that uh, it might be something that you can do yourself. But I'm really happy with the situation that I have today um, and having all of this freedom. So no, I don't have that, that fancy big house. No, I don't have um, that fancy car. No, I don't have um, a lot of those latest gadgets and devices. Um, but I do have my freedom. And I was able to achieve it because of um, those philosophies that I followed there. And uh, I highly recommend if you want that freedom of financial independence, that uh, following those core principles I usually talk about um, on minimalism and also uh, investing what you save and uh, having a budgeting and um, ways for you to manage all your your bad money habits um, all of those together will for sure eventually get you to uh, financial independence um, at an early age or you can even continue working if you wanted to um, just getting to a certain point and knowing that you have financial security is a very fantastic feeling and uh, no one could take that away from you. Well, tell me what you think of the uh, reasons why you're broke all the time in the comment section below. Uh, maybe you can also mention some of the points that um, you're challenged with today or um, you know of anybody else who may be challenged with. And if you know of any solutions, uh, go ahead and uh, make a comment below. Um, if you like this vlog, please don't forget to give me a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell for more of my coming content here. Thank you for watching my vlog. Be free, gain wealth, and travel far.